Hey, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you this uh, Tuesday morning in the Word. Looking forward to, as always, sharing uh, what God has for us today. Thank you for being with us and joining with us, whether you do it live early in the morning or whether you watch it later on. It doesn't matter to me. I just hope and pray that it's a blessing to you. So uh, thank you for that. Well, let's get started this morning. We are in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, known as that great faith chapter, the Hall of Faith, not the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Faith. Michael, good morning. Uh, yeah, we, there, there's a lot of, Carol, good morning, you know, sporting uh, icons, you know, sporting groups, you know, the Hall of Fame and, and all that. Well, this is the Hall of Faith. And uh, it is a blessing to read through this chapter, and I'm sure you've done it plenty of times, but you look at the folks that are in this chapter and uh, how that, Tracy, good morning, how that God was able to, uh, someone once said this, I'm glad that God can hit straight with a crooked stick. <laughs> so, you, look at, you look at these characters in the Bible and it gives you great hope that if God can use those folks, then God can use me. Uh, all right, we're in, uh, we're in Hebrews chapter 11. Just want to read a few verses here, beginning in verse 32. He says, what shall I more say? Now, he's been given us a whole list of uh, folks in the Bible that, you know, you go back and he's been talking about Moses and Rahab and, uh, you know, Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and, you know, goes further back. So he's given us this great list of people, what they were able to do by faith. Now, I've said this before and let me say it again. In this chapter, you see by faith and through faith. I think through faith is mentioned three times and through faith is is your faith in God. God acts, all right? By your faith, God acts according to your faith. God God does work according to faith, folks. That's why it's important that we we, we grow our faith. But this, this chapter mainly deals with by faith, by faith. And by faith is you doing for God by faith. You, you're stepping out. You're doing something, and and that's the majority of this chapter, all right? So he says, And what shall I more say, for the time would fail to tell of Gideon, Barak, and Samson, Jephthah, and David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith. Now, here we've got through faith. So their faith in God, look what God was able to do through someone's faith in him, all right? Through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises. So you want the promises of God? You want to see victory? You do it through faith in God. Stop the mouths of lions. Now you think about Samson with that, but I also also think of Daniel. I mean, look what God did when Daniel was let down into the lion's den and he shut the mouths of the lions. Uh, Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And we'll stop there, but it goes on, right? The thought that I got today, and, and this is this is important why, why preachers, and if you're a preacher and you're watching some watch later on, this is why it's important that, that we as preachers listen to a lot of messages, it's preachers, other preachers preaching, because God gives us seed thoughts. And, uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, but God may speak to a preacher about something. And, and this is the case. I was listening to a preacher preach. I, I've got a couple of thoughts, actually, this week that I might share because I was listening to someone else preach and the passage that they were sharing from, I just, just God gave me a thought out of that, all right? But I want you to think about verse number 34. And the thought this morning is this, is that weak, weak, but waxing valiant, weak, but waxing valiant. You know, all of us, or nobody starts out being valiant in the Christian life. Nobody starts out being valiant. Uh, We all hope to be that. We want to grow in that, but all of us start out in weakness. And let me just let you in on a little secret according to the Christian life is that God will always allow you a little weakness Right, he will allow you a little weakness because he wants to use that weakness for his benefit. 
Now, I don't have a problem with that. God is God. God can do whatever he wants to do. I'm his. I'm bought with a price. He can do whatever. And I'm going to share a scripture with you in a minute that will support that, right? But none of us start out like gung-ho, valiant, and all this sort of stuff. We all start out with weakness, and the weakness in certain areas of life will never leave us. And that's not a bad thing, all right? It's not a bad thing. But it was out of weakness that they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. In other words, waxing valiant means they grew in that to become valiant, right? So this is talking about Gideon. I mean, you think about Gideon. What was he doing when the Midianites, he was, he was hiding for fear of them, right? Uh, he, he wasn't this great, woohoo, you know, off I go. I'm going to fight the Midians. As a matter of fact, when the angel of God come down and said, thou mighty man of valor, and he's like, what, 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 who, what, me? No, no, not me. And so God saw him as a mighty man of valiant. He didn't see himself as a mighty man of valiant, but God saw him as that. And so God took this weak man, this weak individual, and used him for his glory. He grew in that valiance, if you please. He grew valiant in God. And then you think about Barak and, and Barak. Remember Barak? Oh, he says to, uh, uh, oh, I forgot her name now, the prophetess. Oh, just, I had it, but I went. Um, Deborah, there you go. Deborah and Barak. Barak's like, oh, I'm, I'm, if I'm, I'm not going if you're not going. <laughs> All this sort of stuff. Deborah says, hey, it's not going to be for your glory. Hey, Brother Jack, good morning. Uh, and so we go on. So you get the idea. Samson, Samson broke every law, every Nazarite law. <laughs> Just like, you know, he was such a rebel, you know. But you know what I really appreciate, and I hope you do as well appreciate about God, is that God, in this great hall of faith, and these men and the other men and the women that were mentioned, like Rahab was a harlot, but God never brings up the sin. He never brought up the past. He Right in this chapter, we've got the achievements of these people that what they were able to do by faith, but also we see what God could do through their faith in God. And I like that about God. I'm glad that when I sin and I confess it, it's under the blood and, and done. God does. He remembers it no more. We, on the other hand, struggle with that. We, we remind ourselves regularly. But God records these amazing achievements in this great chapter. Why? To help us. To help us. One of the weaknesses that we battle with is that weakness of the flesh. We're constantly battling the weakness of the flesh. God knows this. But out of that weakness, we can wax valiant. And I'm certainly glad that out of a bad situation can come good. I think of Samson. Remember when Samson killed that lion? Took him and ripped him open and all of that. And, and then he comes back and he sees it and there's this honey in the lion and he's eating that. And I often think about that because you think about the lion that attacked him, that's a bad thing. But he kills the lion, but out of the lion comes this honey, this good stuff. Out of a bad situation, out of a bad experience can come good. And I'm certainly glad for that, aren't you? I'm glad for that. So he gives us this list and we've all got to understand that none of us start out in this journey of being valiant we grow in that. We, we wax valiant, right? Now, with that thought in mind, hold your, hold your place here. I'm just going to look at a few scriptures just to, just to sort of show this sort of thing. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 80. Luke 1, 80. It says this, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. That's John the Baptist, right? So John the Baptist, he grew, he waxed strong. He, he waxed strong in spirit. He grew in spiritual strength, okay? Now let's have a look at another verse. Look at uh, chapter 13, Luke 13. I think it is Luke 13 and verse 19. I hope I've got that right. Luke 13, 19. Oh yeah, now look at verse 18. Then said he, this is Jesus, under what is the kingdom of God likened and whereunto shall I resemble it? Uh, is it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast it into the garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. So it waxed 
a great tree. It grew into a great tree. Okay. So when you're talking about out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, they grew in that strength. They grew to become valiant in the, uh, in the fight that they were facing. Now, they, as you know, in the Old Testament, they would fight physical battles. Literally, you know what I mean? Armies against armies, right? We know that our battle is a spiritual one. And uh, we've got to wax valiant in that. We've got to grow in that. This is why I personally believe, this is just my opinion now, that when Paul and Barnabas went off on their first journey and took John Mark with them, you know, if you read it carefully, they Paul and Barnabas experienced a lot of spiritual warfare, demon possession. They dealt with all of that. And then the next opportunity, John Mark's like, I'm out of here. I'm going home. I personally think that it was the spiritual battles, the demon possessions, the things that he experienced sort of scared him a bit. All right. That's just my take on that. All right. It's not in there. That's just what I think. Okay. Because a lot of people can't handle that sort of thing. They can't handle the thought of a spiritual. Now, Brother Jack, who's on this morning, he preaches in the city. And I tell you, if there is one place where darkness dwells, it's in the city. If you've ever done any street preaching or street witnessing or whatever it is, you get good. I've, I've had it in Perth and in Adelaide, we'd do some street witnessing. I've had people come up, grab the truck, throw them away. Just, and I've seen demonic possession in those areas, right? And a lot of people can't handle that, right? They just can't handle being involved in that. They, they, they get scared of that, right? So that's why I think John Mark did that. But we've got to wax, we've got to grow in that. Uh, John the Baptist, he, he waxed in strong in spirit at this tree, waxed a great tree, grew into a great tree. And we've got to grow, especially folks, and we keep mentioning this in the day in which we live, we need some Christians who will wax valiant in fight. Okay. Now, Daniel, we won't turn here. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible says, and they that know their God shall do exploits. I, I mean, come on, do you not want to accomplish great things for God? Don't you want to be used of him in such a way that, that God can work through you and use you and, and do amazing things, not for your glory or my glory, but so that he gets the glory. And this is why he uses weak people. Because if he uses those that are strong in and of themselves and all that, they're like, hey, look what I did. No, no, no. He takes the weak and he uses the weak. Why? Well, we'll look at that in a minute. Right. We'll look at that in a minute. In 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1, there was a, there was a warrior by the name of Naaman. Bible says that he was a mighty man, a mighty man of valiant. He was a mighty valiant man. That's what he says, a mighty valiant man. But... He was a leper. He had something in his life that was a weakness, weakened him, and yet still with that weakness there, he was a mighty man of valor. Right? So don't despise or lament the weakness. Allow God to use the weakness because out of weakness, we wax valiant. God helps us. Right? Now, Let's, uh, let's go somewhere. I want to give you a few thoughts this morning about this, just a couple of thoughts. The first thing is this. God chooses the weak to work through the weak. I'm not talking about the days of the week. I'm talking about weak, physically weak, even spiritually weak. You know, we talk about spiritual giants and, and you think about the back in Hebrews 11 and the list goes on and we see the achievements. But, you know, one of the one of the... One, I think it was Noah. Let me just read this for a minute. I think it was Noah. Look at this in verse 7, Hebrews eleven seven. By faith, now watch this. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. By faith, with fear. What? By faith, with fear. Listen. You know, the, 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 the weakness of the flesh... We know that sin is still around. It's it's there. It's never. It's not in our life. The 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 penalty of it has been dealt with. The the the, the sin has been dealt with. But it's still around. The, the presence of it is not going to be gone until we're with God in glory. 
As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said, when I find in a law that when I want to do good, evil is present with me. He knew all about that. So God chooses the weak in order to work through the weak. Now, you say, well, what, give me a scripture on that. Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to, I'm going to motor through these a little bit just for the sake of time, so I'm not holding you up too long. So God chooses the weak in order to use the weak or work through the weak because he wants his strength manifested in our life. That's why we ought to embrace. Nobody likes the weakness. You know, nobody likes the older you get. And, and you hear this all the time. And you, you can't do the things that you used to do when you were a young man. Now, you, your mind might think it's OK, but your body says, ah. Uh, and you have to adapt, right? You have to, okay, I can't do that anymore. I can't run anymore. I can't whatever. You know, I can't. T- my wife asked me, can you, t-? and you're trying to take that lid off and, oh, my hands are all weak. It, it happens with life, right? With age, you, you, you get weaker. But, you know, whether it's physical or whether it's spiritual, the weaker we are, the more opportunity we have to see the greatness of God working in our life roller skate (laughs) yeah roller skate don't try this at home folks um listen to this verse here in first corinthians chapter one and look at what god does here in verse 27 but god hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and god hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound that or the confound the things which are mighty so he chooses the weak right Base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things which are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, right? Uh, So verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Let him glory in the Lord. That's why he chooses the weak. So that we glory in him and God gets the glory. But he chooses the weak. He doesn't choose the strong. He doesn't choose the, the, the you, know, you know, sometimes there are folks that lament, oh, I'm just not like this person. I'm not brainy like this person. I can't do this and I can't do that. That's fine. Don't worry about that. God is able to still use, he, as a matter of fact, he loves the weak. He's attracted to the weakness, not attracted to your strengths. He's attracted to your weakness. Read her, Michael. Good morning. So don't lament the weakness in your life. Embrace the weakness because God can still use that. As a matter of fact, he wants that to show himself strong. So he chooses the weak. Now, that that verse 31, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. I want to go to Jeremiah. I just want to read this very quickly because it's it's, it's from Jeremiah. It's an amazing couple of verses. Just let me read this very quickly. Jeremiah 9, 23, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord, which exerciseth loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. What a blessing that is. Don't don't glory in your strengths. Glory in your weaknesses. And this is what Paul was saying in in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, Let me just turn there quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You all know it. That that thorn in the flesh that he's dealing with. Verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace, Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Out of weakness, they waxed valiant in fight. And so God, Jesus in his wisdom, allowed the thorn in Paul's life because he knew that that was going to weaken him so that God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, could show himself strong on his behalf so that he glories in the Lord. Lord, I couldn't have done that without you. Lord, I couldn't have preached that message without you. I couldn't have witnessed to that person without you. I I couldn't have done this without you, Lord. You know, this is why this is... You know, you talk about, even I was thinking this about growing a church. Who can grow a church? Nobody can grow a church. Only God can grow a church that's going to be a church of any significance. 
You say, well, hang on a second. Hey, let me just say it. You know, man can grow a church. But if man grows the church, it's man's church, not the Lord's. And it's headed for disaster. So God allows these things in our life because he knows that the weakness is going to be a benefit to us. Uh, so he seeks this thing. He, 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 sought it, he sought it three times, but he said, My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, the weaknesses of my flesh, the weaknesses of my spiritual life. Why? That the power of Christ may, be, may rest upon me. And I've said this before. Oh, we want the power of God in our life. We want the power of God, the power of God. Okay, you want the power of God? Then prepare to be weakened. Prepared to be weakened, all right? The power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul said, oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Woohoo! Hang on a sec. And the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Oh, we want the power of the resurrected life in our life. Yes! But there's something associated with that. Suffering. Suffering. Mm. You can't have one without the other. You really can't. Anyway, that's another topic we can develop a little bit more. Therefore, he says, will I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake? For when I am weak, then am I strong. What a great man of wisdom he was. I want to share this verse with you, Psalm 102, because along the way, and we talked about the way of holiness, that highway yesterday, you know, that Christian life, and we're walking in this life, and, and we're, we're striving, we're pursuing, and all those sorts of things. This is a verse that, that really, this, the truth of this verse has, has been such a blessing to me. And some people may not like it, but it's scripture. <laughs> How can you argue with the Bible? Now listen to this, in Psalm 102 verse 23, he says this, He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. He weakened my strength in the way. So in this way of life, the way of the Christian life, we're, we're walking, we're, we're serving, we're doing all that. He weakens my strength. Now, there are some things that I'm naturally weak in. But there are some things that I'm naturally strong in. So God takes the things that you are naturally strong in and he weakens that so that he can manifest his strength through that weakness. Isn't God good? <laughs> you might think, well, I don't know about that. Hey, listen, we could all testify to God weakening us in our journey, right? And so therefore he weakens my strength. Now, again... We don't like feeling weak because weakness means vulnerability. You know, Jesus said, I, I send you out as lambs among wolves. I mean, how, my goodness, how vulnerable would you feel being sent out as a lamb? I mean, a <laughs> lamb amongst the wolves. Okay, we're going to be torn to pieces here. But here's the thought. Who's the great shepherd of the sheep? So if he's sending you out as lambs among wolves, who's going to protect you? Right? Jesus is. You, you, the illustration, uh, when, when David in 1 Samuel 17, right, he says, thy servant kept the father's sheep from the lion and the bear and so on and so forth. Jesus can protect you from the wolves. He can protect his church from the wolves too, by the way. So he chooses the weak to work through the weak. I've got to hurry, all right? Now, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Here's the other thing. The last thought is this. Now, so how, how, do I, how do I wax valiant out of weakness? How does that take place? Well, understand that God chooses the weak in order to work through the weak. The second thing is this. You've got to have a working faith. you really got to have a working faith. And again, faith is something that we grow in. Faith is like that muscle that, that you know, we've all been given the measure of faith, right? And what you do with it, it's up to you. Hope and pray that you're growing in your faith in God. Now, but remember, I said in this chapter, there's by faith and through faith. All right. And, and not that this is a hard and fast rule, but majority of times by faith, as I said, by faith is you by faith doing something for God. Through faith is you placing your faith in God and God working through that faith. All right. Either way, it's teamwork. You and God. You and God. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Not, not apart from Christ, it's got to be through him. Okay. 
Now, what, just one verse here, because we're in Hebrews chapter 11, dealing with faith. Look at verse number six, familiar verse for all of us, I'm sure. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And whatever we do, we're to do by faith, right? It's impossible to please him. So you and I, we've got to be men and women of faith, which is what this whole chapter is dealing with. Listen, God is not looking for perfection in humanity because he knows that naturally speaking, there is no perfection in me apart from Christ. I'm perfect in Christ. I get that. That's who I am in him. But he knows me. There's no perfection. He knows that. And yet God wants to take you and I, imperfect people, grow out of weakness. He wants us to wax valiant in fight. And this is a day, brethren. This is a day where we've got to take up spiritual arms and fight. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. What? You've got to believe that he is God. And that with God, nothing is impossible. Right? Do you believe in this God of the Bible that with God, nothing's impossible? If you come to God, you must believe that he is the God of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, everything that we see about our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, everything we see in our Bible, we think, you know what? That's my God. Therefore, I ought to have faith and believe that he is still the God, creator God, savior God, whatever. You know what I mean? He is God. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we seek him by faith. He rewards the faith seeker. Now, you, you read through the New Testament, right? And, and some Christians really have a hard time with this. Anything that the Lord Jesus did, the majority of time, he would say, be it unto you according to your faith. So it's, and by the way, you don't need, Shari, good morning. You don't need great faith to start with. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. Remember that verse in Luke 13, 19, where he talks about that mustard seed and you plant that and it waxed a great tree? <clears throat> you know what he's saying? You take that mustard seed faith, Hebrews eleven twenty two. have faith in God. You take your mustard seed faith and you plant it in your God. You talk about a soil that is good for seed, that's God. God is that. You take that mustard seed faith and you plant that mustard seed faith and see your faith wax great. Because impossible without it to please God. So out of weakness, they waxed valiant. That's hope for all of us. These people in Hebrews 11 are not so far up here on the wall. You know, you go to, I used to play golf. I don't play golf that much anymore. And afterwards, you'd, you'd go and grab a drink or whatever. I'm talking about a soft drink, not a beer in the, in the clubhouse. And up on the wall, right, you'd see all the mighty achievements of all the, the, the members of the golf course and all of that. And just, you know, and, you, and I would look at that. <laughs> I'm like, no way. I mean, I'm just a weekend hacker, you know what I mean? I, I, I couldn't dawn that wall. But let me tell you about this, about this Hebrews 11. The people in Hebrews 11 are no better than you and I. They were people who were weak that God chose to work through. And that's you and I today. So out of our weakness, we can wax valiant in fight because of God. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Thank you for the examples of these ones in Hebrews 11 and what a mighty God you are. And I pray, Lord, that our faith would be in you. Lord, we want to, we, we do, I'm sure, we want to do things for you. We, we, and we want to do it by faith. We want to do it through faith. So God help us in the day in which we live, we ask in Jesus' name. 
Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining this morning. I appreciate that. Hope that was an encouragement to you. Have a great day in the Lord. Look forward to being with you same time tomorrow morning. So until then, God bless you. Goodbye for now.